the spongers on the carpusia <laughs> foam and drool with rumors. Why did Manolis Macramatis, the taxi driver, stow these foreigners away on our funky vegetable boat? Seem like Manolis and his taxi friends, Apostoli, Statis, and Coronanatis, is, 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 kiss, um, They seem like they were actually guarding our departure, but pretending not to. Paniotis nods knowingly. They are hashish smugglers fleeing to Turkey. Well, another rumor, they owed Zambicos grocery in Lindo's months of bills for food and um, unpaid, unpaid grocery bills. They had to get away bad. The village simpleton named Statis softly suggests maybe they are travelers and want to visit Sponge Island. Old Panayoti sees, I told you not to be stupid, boy, as he cuffs studies across the back of his neck after which the village idiot is roundly abused by everybody on the boat. Well, roads to Yolds Harbor, Sponge, 90 minutes. The Carpusia near Sponge Harbor and motors into the deep blue fjord, hmm. surrounding by rotting sponge mansions. The atmosphere is ghost port. Yes, these days, Sponge is paralyzed and immobile, except for a few boat builders and fishermen. As Cleopatra and I enter the tranquil harbor of Yalos, we kiss passionately. For the second time. We walk off the boat together and hang around the harbor taverna. Cleopatra with her rudimentary peasant Greek with the endearing dodecanesis accent works her charms around the neighborhood grocery store for any available shelter. As sponge tongues wag behind the scenes, we are obviously friends of Manolis Macranatis, the handsome cab driver in Roadstone, who is the nephew of the Messiah, Costas, himself. Wow, uh, something exceptional must be done. Cleopatra returns to the quayside taverna laughing like a gypsy. She is dangling the keys to an abandoned sponge mansion near the harbor. For one dollar, thirty drachmas a night. 
We have no clue how fortunate we are. We innocently savor a lazy afternoon wandering around the pristine Greek landscape. We gather bouquets of tall fennel, wild oleander. During sunset, we meander back to our rotting sponge nest. This is our first night on earth in our own private room together. The absolutely deserted romantic setting is erotically obvious. For the first time, we become naked before one another and gaze with lust. Amazed. We collapse into the rotting planked bed and embrace. I am so happy I ran away with you, my lovely boy, my wild boy, Purse Cleopatra. As she orgasms, Cleopatra swoons into a profound relief, a rush of blissful release as my jade stalk delicately rise in her pussy. Her fashion model flesh tingles and glows from head to toe. Look, I'm funny. My cock gets hard again and again without, with, I'm not even withdrawing in between plunges into paradise here. Yeah. Uh, during her cascades of orgasms, Cleopatra swoons into deep ecstasy because with the you know <clears throat> climax she gets it she is not with snake anymore mm -mm. she escaped his abusive violence mm -hmm. She is drifting through the Dodecanesis Islands with a peaceful man who makes her feel turned on <laughs> inside and out. What a relief for me, too. Whew. Because since landing in Europe, I have suffered two unnaturally high and dry months without sex. Except for the exception of the marathon LSD fuck and fellatio afterburner with the naked Dutch hippie chicks two nights ago. Compare this. I mean, like, Cleopatra was getting screwed morning, noon, and night by her stud, Snake. They first mated in the prehistoric cave dweller hippie caves of Matala on Crete and became hookah-bearing hashish aficionadas, followers of the bio zone within the biggest hash dealer in Europe. In the afterglow, Cleopatra floats the lascivious notion 
Why not honeymoon in bed right here for weeks? Count me in. We ardently make love, not war. In fact, we rarely risk the world beyond the door of our rotten mansion on our luscious otherworldly basket of Venus sponge mattress. If they ain't got nothing else, they got basket of Venus everywhere. Cleopatra initiates me for the first time to, you know, the world of sex. It's like snorkeling, she showed me. Once you go under the water, everything looks and feels different. Dive in, young boy. Go as deep as you wish. Olympian lustful episodes. Experimenting. Just kind of flowing into the stuff with no book, you know, knowledge or any of that. You know, waste of time. We just like kind of drift into what I later learned was Tantra and micro-movements and sustaining somebody like just before they're going to but not you know wait and build it up fantasy sex mm -hmm. cleopatra mark antony wants to fuck you <laughs> on a rare walk we gather Wildflowers, a natural bouquet for our shaman.